Hi guys. So let's start with the first section of your syllabus, which is external financial reporting decisions. So this particular topic usually covers the discussion on financial reporting. Financial reporting includes your profit and loss balance sheet, cash flow statement and other financial statements. So now you might think that, sir, we already know how to prepare balance sheet, profit and loss. So will we be able to answer all these things? Yes. The technically this topic covers this balance sheet profit and loss and all but if i go into a little bit details of it you know if i see about your profit and loss in your plus one plus two or your graduation you might have prepared a profit and loss in a horizontal format like dr on one side and cr on one side on the debit side you might start with your trading account so your trading account would look something like uh, by opening stock by purchases by factory expenses by wages all the production cost in short right and on the credit side you will have two sales two closing stock and uh, two any other in uh, direct incomes if at all they are there in your business commission or stuff like that then you will just total it up and uh, if it is on the debit side if the balancing figure is on the debit side you will uh, you will record it as by gross profit and if it is on the credit side to gross loss and then this will be carried forward to your profit and loss account as a two gross profit and then you'll start recording all your indirect expenses on the debit side and all your indirect incomes on the credit side and you will calculate your net profit or loss right this is what you might have done in your uh, you know plus one plus two and other graduation classes but please remember sir this is not your traditional uh, you know accounts course this is cma us so here you are expected to learn the performers properly and your uh, statements also would be different than what you have learned in the college uh, and other uh, courses i can say so in case of uh, you know professionals we do not call it as profit and loss account it's not pnl account it is actually pnl statement sir what is the difference between an account and a statement i'll tell you in a short sir you prepare bank account in your books of accounts right so bank account looks like this again debits and credits will be there and all inflows will be on the debit side all the outflows will be on the credit side whatever and then you'll prepare a balance right so this is your bank account an account looks like a t-shape okay debits and credits whereas if i talk about the bank statement if you download your bank statement you know it would look like one two three four five six seven eight so on so further so there will be an opening balance on the top there will be all debits and credits listed out as a uh, you know transaction form and then at the end they'll calculate the closing balance that is the difference between a account and a statement so when you look at all the professional courses we would be preparing statements not accounts okay that is your first understanding so here if you see we call it as income statement not profit and loss account okay similarly there will be a statement of uh, you know financial position which is nothing but your balance sheet there will be a statement of changes in equity a statement of cash flows and also we'll have a discussion on what is integrated reporting so your first section in cma part one talks about external financial reporting decisions and it covers 15 percent of your score so there are two topics in this first section the topic one is uh, basically your financial statements where we talk about balance sheet p and l statement of cash flow statement of changes in equity notes to accounts integrated reporting and in the second topic comes the most critical one which is recognition measurement valuations and disclosures sir what is this all about sir just to give you a glimpse okay just to give you a glimpse your income statement which is nothing but your profit and loss for you to correlate so your income statement starts with the first letter sales correct or you can call it as revenue now i'll ask you a simple question sir you'll automatically understand why we have all this list of topics you can see a huge list of topics here so why do we have so many topics i'll explain you with this one simple example okay so today you started a business and your business name is 
company xyz for example your company name is xyz there is a customer called customer a okay so now the example scenario is like this on 1st january 2023 customer a purchased okay listen to me very carefully um, so i'd rather change this customer a came to you company xyz on 1st jan 2023 he gave you an advance of 500 dollars for purchasing a product so this is done when on 1st of january 2023 and on uh, april 10th 4 10 23 guys please be uh, careful with the ddmm and mmdd format this is mmdd format month date format so 4 10 means not 4th of october it is april 10th so be careful so this is 10th of april or april 10th uh, you have delivered the product to mr a delivered the product to mr a and then on uh, may 4th on may 4th 23 customer a said all good all good as in after you delivered the product he uh, you know customer verifies everything is good or not uh, and uh, is there any issues with the product is there any defect in the product everything he go he checks everything and then on 5th may 4th may 4th the customer said all good send me invoice so on that date you raised the invoice to mr a and now comes the next one you raise the invoice let's say in june 3rd 3rd june 2023 customer paid balance 600 dollars invoice was for a total of 1100 dollars 500 was paid initially as advance 600 is paid balance later okay now i'll ask you a simple question when should company xyz recognize the sales when should company xyz record or recognize the sales so the answer is not simple you know uh, accrual concept and all will be there but again there are a lot of conditions that we need to check you know initially if i'm talking at a, a basic level i can say when the advance is received that will not be recognized as an income because it's just money collected it's not actually product delivered or uh, you know goods transferred to the customer yet this is the step where you just received the money there is no performance that is satisfied here so there are a lot of words i might need to use to explain you this but at this point it is too early for me to explain the technical terms so just understand that is advance received and that is not actually goods delivered to the client and if i talk about on 4th of october sir we delivered the goods so can we recognize the revenue or sales on uh, sorry not 4th of october it is again i did the same mistake it is april 10th on april 10th we delivered the goods so can we recognize the revenue no why sir because you delivered the goods the customer did not accept them yet so if i have to be very logical on 5th april 2003 when the customer said all good and when you raised the invoice 1100 that is when you have to recognize the revenue it's not at the time of advance it's not at the time of yeah it's not at the time of advance it's not at the time of balance due it is at the time when the goods are delivered no it is at the time when the invoice is issued sir who said so who said so why should i follow this particular condition so for that you have an answer my dear friend that answer comes from this particular topic in your section here which is revenue recognition and income measurement revenue recognition and income measurement when you should recognize the revenue how you should recognize the revenue and how you should measure the revenue these things are covered in your revenue recognition topic all right so like that only if i go to balance sheet 
so in balance sheet suppose i have inventory at what value should i measure the inventory let's say i purchased the stock for 100 dollars but it is not yet sold so it will be there in the closing stock now while closing my books of accounts and while preparing my balance sheet inventory is a tricky area for me why sir because that inventory cost was let's say 100 dollars market value on the date when i am closing my books let's say on uh, you know december 31 2023 i am closing my books of accounts on that day the market value is let's say 80 dollars so while preparing the balance sheet or your statement of financial position in the current assets portion in the inventory section should i record it at 80 dollars or should i record it at 100 dollars so the standard there has to be something that defines these things it says do not show at the higher value show it at the lower value sir who says so you know this particular standard inventories ias2 specifically tells you inventory has to be recorded at lower of cost or nrv okay again this will come in more detail we'll learn these things when we go into the respective topics of the syllabus but now i'm only covering the overview similarly suppose you have a property plant and equipment you purchased some furniture five years ago or you bought a land some 10 years ago at what value should we record them how should we recognize them in the balance sheet covered in tangible asserts you have some uh, you know patents intangible asserts copyrights trademarks how do we recognize them intangible asserts suppose you purchased some shares of some other company or you have invested in some other entity you have given a loan to someone given a loan not borrowed you gave a loan to someone it will be covered under investment section suppose if you are dealing with foreign currencies you have uh, exports and imports so how do you account for that foreign currency transactions will be there suppose what about uh, contingencies sir something that may or may not happen if the company is giving warranties and guarantees how do we record them how do we create provisions for future expected losses how do we recognize the receivables bad debts provision for bad debts non-current liabilities bank loans long-term term loans etc etc how do we recognize the equity what is the difference between uh, you know common capital and preferred capital in india we call it as equity shares and preferred shares but in us and all they call them common shares and preferred shares it's fine we'll learn it more when we go there revenue recognition how do we recognize the revenue income measurement what is the difference between revenue and income that's again a very nice topic we'll discuss later on how do we talk about how do we account for deferred taxes income taxes and deferred taxes what about leases that the company has uh, you know the company has uh, taken an asset on lease how do we record it if you have given an asset on lease how do you record that both of these things business combinations consolidation if i have to give you an example very recently you might have seen uh, facebook acquiring whatsapp or uh, you can take example of zomato acquiring blinkit right there are different different examples of acquisitions consolidations business mergers uh, or i can say microsoft uh, you know they acquired linkedin even uh, facebook acquired instagram or we can talk about uh, microsoft again uh, that they acquired uh, github right there are so many such kind of business combinations consolidations mergers that are happening how do we account for that how do we value goodwill what is the difference between internally generated goodwill and externally purchased goodwill all these topics will be covered and then comes the critical one which most of the students usually ignore that is significant differences between the us gap and the ifrs sir please understand us gap is only followed in us ifrs is followed in more than 100 countries across the globe okay ifrs you can call them as international financial reporting standards these are international that means these are followed across the globe by various countries some countries directly follow ifrs some countries adopt ifrs okay some countries like india we do not adopt ifrs completely but what we do is we use ifrs as a base and we designed our own standards called as indas but if you see the standards are pretty much sil uh, similar except for two differences one is called carwins 
which means something that is not there in the IFRS, which is added in INDAs or there could be carve outs. What are carve outs? Something that is there in the IFRS, which is removed when they prepared the INDAs. So additions and deletions in short for you to easily understand. So we, uh, you know, take the IFRS as a base and we developed our own standards. So in simply speaking, US gap is followed in the US, IFRS is followed internationally. So this is your introduction to your section A, which is on external financial reporting decisions. I strongly believe that before you start any topic, you should know the in and out about what are the coverages of that particular topic. So section A coverage, what are the topics, what are the elements, a brief introduction about all the elements I have given in this particular video. So slow, uh, slowly we'll go and uh, discuss about each of these elements in separate, separate videos. So I hope you guys are following this and uh, do feel free to share these videos with anyone who you think can be benefited by this. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Until then, keep smiling. Take care. Bye-bye.